After more than 20 days in lunar orbit, the lander and ascender combination of the Chang'e 6 probe successfully navigated the critical final 15 minutes before landing and successfully touched down in the Apollo crater within the South Pole Aitken Basin on the far side of the moon at 6.23 Beijing time on June 2, 2024. Chang'e-6's perfect lunar landing performance seems to make people forget that landing on the moon is an extremely challenging task. In fact, the entire lunar landing mission is not only arduous, but the last 15 minutes of the landing process are particularly fraught with challenges, often referred to as the, the crucial 15 minutes. The last 15 minutes of the lunar landing are called the, the crucial 15 minutes because this brief period is one of the most perilous phases of the entire mission. Many probes have failed at this stage, such as India's Chandrayaan-2 probe, Japan's Hakuto-R probe, and Russia's Luna-25 probe. Other probes, like Japan's slim lunar lander, although successfully landing, encountered some issues. India's second lunar mission, the Chandrayaan-2 probe, carried the Vikram lander, which lost communication with Earth at an altitude of 2.1 kilometers, about 1.3 miles, during its attempt to soft land in September 2019. Despite smooth progress throughout its more than 40-day journey to the moon, Chandrayaan-2 unfortunately encountered a failure during the final soft landing phase. In April 2023, Japan's private space company Ispace's Hakuto-R lunar lander crashed while attempting to soft land on the lunar surface. The Hakuto-R lander began descending from about 100 kilometers, about 62 miles, above the lunar surface. It operated as expected until the scheduled landing time, but at an altitude of 5 kilometers, about 3.1 miles, it mistakenly estimated the height as zero. Eventually, after exhausting its fuel, the descent speed suddenly increased, leading to a direct crash into the lunar surface. In August 2023, Russia's Luna 25 probe planned to soft land near the Bogoslavsky crater at the moon's south pole, but encountered an anomaly. Analysis indicated that the probe deviated from its intended orbit and lost contact after crashing into the lunar surface. The small lander for investigating moon, SLIM, developed by the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, JAXA, landed on the moon on January 20, 2024, making Japan the fifth country to achieve a soft lunar landing. However, the slim lunar intelligent lander experienced propulsion issues during the final landing stage. One of the two descent engines lost its nozzle on the lunar surface, leading to a sudden drop in thrust, and the lander ultimately landed in a nose-first position. The lunar lander Odysseus, developed by the U.S. private company Intuitive Machines, toppled over upon landing on the moon on February 22, 2024, at 18.23 Eastern Time, but continued to function normally. Data showed that one of its six landing legs got stuck during the landing process, causing it to tip over upon touchdown. This marked the first lunar landing by an American spacecraft in over 50 years. Chang'e 6 achieved a perfect lunar landing and successfully sampled and returned to lunar orbit. This is not only China's fourth successful lunar soft landing mission, but also China's fifth successful extraterrestrial landing mission. Previously, China's Tianwen-1 successfully landed on Mars. Therefore, China has achieved a 100% success rate in lunar and extraterrestrial landings. The accomplishments of Chinese engineers are remarkable. Before uncovering the secrets behind the success of Chang'e-6's lunar landing, let's understand the factors that make landing in the South Pole Aitken Basin on the moon's far side particularly challenging. The far side of the moon has complex terrain. It always faces away from Earth and, compared to the near side, 
features rugged terrain with numerous impact craters and relatively fewer flat and dark lunar maria, making it resemble other barren places in the solar system. The South Pole Aitken Basin is one of the largest impact craters in the solar system. It has a low elevation with elevation differences up to tens of thousands of meters or feet, and the available landing area is quite narrow. Chang'e 6 not only aims to land on the moon, but also to collect samples and return, requiring the selected landing area to be favorable for both landing and the ascender's takeoff. The combination of the Chang'e 6 lander and ascender requires that the slope of the lunar landing area be no more than 8 degrees. Additionally, since the Chang'e mission's landers primarily rely on solar panels for power, the timing of the landing must consider solar illumination to facilitate post-landing operations. Thus, Chang'e 6 needed to land within a specific small area at a determined time. Chinese engineers refer to this capability as the ability for timed and pinpoint landing. Chang'e 6 chose to land during the lunar morning. The surface temperature on the moon's far side is relatively low in the morning, allowing the lander to avoid the extreme high temperatures that can reach up to 127 degrees Celsius, about 260 degrees Fahrenheit, at noon providing a cooler working period for the lander. After landing, there is also ample solar power available. During the roughly 20 days of orbiting the moon before landing, Chang'e 6 used different elliptical lunar orbit transfers and orbit control during this waiting period to acquire more launch windows, ensuring the most accurate descent trajectory for the lunar landing. The landing process of Chang'e 6 was divided into the main deceleration phase, rapid adjustment phase, and obstacle avoidance landing phase. The obstacle avoidance landing phase further included the approach phase, hovering and obstacle avoidance phase, descent phase, and landing phase. After the combination of the lander and ascender separated from the orbiter-returner combination, the lander and ascender entered a landing preparation orbit with a paraloon of 15 kilometers, about 9.3 miles, and an apaloon of 200 kilometers, about 124 miles, adjusted their attitude, and gradually approached the lunar surface through two deorbit operations. When the landing window arrived, the 7,500 Newton, about 1,686 pound force, variable thrust engine mounted at the bottom of the lander ignited. The lander-ascender combination started braking and deceleration from an altitude of 15 kilometers, 9.3 miles, entering the main deceleration phase. At the beginning of the main deceleration phase, the speed of the lander-ascender combination was about 1,700 meters per second, about 5,577 feet per second. By the end of the main deceleration phase, the combination had reached near the landing area, with its speed reduced to about 57 meters per second, about 187 feet per second. Because the moon has virtually no atmosphere, aerodynamic deceleration is not possible, so Chang'e-6's deceleration control relied entirely on the engine's power. The descent power of the Chang'e uh, missions landers is provided by a 7,500 Newton, 1686 pound force, variable thrust engine. This is a variable thrust engine capable of adjusting thrust in the range of 1,500 Newton to 7,500 Newton, about 337 to 1686 pound force. The probe requires different thrust levels at various stages of the lunar landing to achieve precise control of the descent speed. During the main deceleration phase, the Chang'e mission's landers operate at full thrust, while subsequent stages require different thrust levels. If the engine cannot provide variable thrust or has insufficient variable thrust capability, multiple engines would need to work in parallel, adjusting the total thrust by reducing the number of operating engines. 
Guidance and navigation are core aspects of a soft landing mission. The spacecraft needs to measure its distance from the lunar surface and its descent speed accurately. Any errors in these measurements could lead to catastrophic consequences. The laser ranging sensor is one of the first instruments to be activated on Chang U6. It emits laser pulses towards the lunar surface and measures the distance to the far side of the moon in real time by calculating the time interval between the emitted laser pulses and the reflected pulses from the lunar surface. It starts functioning from about 30 kilometers, about 18.6 miles, above the lunar surface and provides precise distance information throughout the soft landing process. When the Chang'e 6 lander descends to about 3 kilometers, 1.86 miles, above the lunar surface, the laser velocimeter begins measuring the lander's descent speed. Accurate real-time distance and speed information are crucial for ensuring the precision and safety of the landing. Following the main deceleration phase is the rapid adjustment phase, during which the probe's attitude shifts towards vertical descent. When the lander and ascender combination reach an altitude of 1,500 meters, about 4,921 feet, above the lunar surface, it enters the approach phase and initiates initial obstacle avoidance. This initial obstacle avoidance is achieved through the cooperation of the optical imaging sensor and the landing terrain sensor. These sensors provide high-reliability wide-area imaging of the pre-selected landing area from a distance. The descent trajectory is corrected by adjusting the engine thrust, allowing for pre-selection of the landing site and avoiding large impact craters on the lunar surface to achieve the goal of initial obstacle avoidance. When the lander-ascender combination is about 100 meters, about 328 feet, above the lunar surface, it has approached very close to the surface and needs to hover at this height for precise obstacle avoidance. Precise obstacle avoidance is conducted by the coordinated operation of the laser 3D imaging sensor and the laser ranging sensor. Within this zone, the slope of the lunar surface must not exceed 8 degree, and there should be no pits or protruding rocks higher than 20 centimeters, about 7.9 inches. The laser 3D imaging sensor can emit multiple laser beams at a high frequency towards the lunar surface from an altitude of 100 meters, about 328 feet, completing an instantaneous scan of a 2,500 square meters, about 26,910 square feet, landing area within 0.25 seconds. Each image contains over 200,000 laser points with a ranging accuracy of five centimeters, about two inches. During the hovering process at an altitude of 100 meters, the lander has only three opportunities to make a decision. The laser 3D imaging sensor on Chang U6 can complete imaging, data processing, and safe landing point selection within 3.33 seconds. In other words, the Chang U6 lander requires only 10 seconds of hovering time. Hovering consumes a significant amount of propellant, so the computational speed of the laser 3D imaging sensor is crucial for reducing the probe's weight. After the hovering phase, the probe descends towards the target landing point. When it reaches approximately 30 meters, 98 feet, above the lunar surface, roughly equivalent to the height of a 10-story building, the obstacle avoidance mission ends and the probe is accurately positioned above the landing site. Following this, the Chang U6 lander and ascender combination descend slowly towards the landing point. When the probe reaches an altitude of about 2 meters, about 7 feet, above the lunar surface, the gamma altimeter senses the height data and knows it is about to touch down. It will then send a shutdown command to the engine. During the final 2 meters, about 7 feet, of descent, the probe performs a free-fall landing onto the lunar surface without engine power. This design aims to minimize the interference from lunar dust blown up by the engine's plume, 
lunar dust could adhere to the solar panels or fall on other payloads, causing adverse effects. To achieve a safe, free-fall landing, the landing legs of Chang U-6 are equipped with aluminum honeycomb material to absorb vertical impact forces. The rods connecting the landing legs have high-efficiency energy-absorbing alloys that can absorb horizontal impact forces through structural deformation. The impressive autonomous obstacle avoidance landing scheme was created and invented by Chinese engineers. It includes initial obstacle avoidance and precise obstacle avoidance based on the concept of machine vision. Realized through the collaboration of the Laser 3D Imaging Sensor and other equipment. This technology was first applied to Chang U3 and has seen significant improvements by the time of Chang U6. Research indicates that unmanned landers before Chang U3 lacked autonomous obstacle avoidance capability in the final stages. This technology ended the era of blind lunar landings for unmanned probes. Without autonomous obstacle avoidance capability, landing on the moon is somewhat like aiming for a pre-selected landing area without precise guidance, making success uncertain and reliant on probabilities. If you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content. Thank you for watching.